Welcome to JTV News. Thank you for joining us. I'm Ino Soman and here's a look at what's coming up in this newscast. A report coming out of the North Shore Integrated Coastal and Watershed Stabilization Project shows that King Garden Bay has lost over 40 feet of sandy area over decades. An interesting find, for instance, Madam Speaker, is that King Garden Bay has lost at least 15 meters of sandy area since 1953. Territory Day features reenactments celebrating VI's independent spirit. Whereas I, Samuel Nottingham of Long Island in the province of New York, gentleman and owner of the reputed owner of a number of Negroes on the island of Tortola, Minister Ronnie Skelton asks if the BVI is brave enough to get rid of the reminders of colonialism. All we need to do now is get the colonial part of it away from us. <laughs> if, we, if we are brave enough to do it. Entrepreneurs invited to Insider's Guide to Fashion and Photography Workshop. Spotlight discusses Temptation Island's scare and new security measures. When we saw this trip, it was a bit, it's something like we couldn't think of before. It was like over the top. It was over the top. It was yeah. like, hey, listen, you know, talking about people coming in from neighboring islands. So it's no more, it's beyond us, it's beyond me. Mm -hmm. Highlights from the record breaking OECS track and field championship. And in our Hot Trend segment, your guide on how to have the best summer sizzle experience. In news from the Caribbean, crime surge in Jamaica could push officials to declare a state of emergency in western Jamaica. And a recovery project for Montserrat's mountain chicken brings the last two rare frogs together in hopes that they begin breeding. In our Medical Minute segment, how to get rid of super lice. Head lice are common in children and according to Mayo Clinic experts, certain strains of lice are becoming resistant to some treatments making it hard to get rid of them. Dr. Geronimo Jones will have that report. And I will be back with the news in just a moment. And for small countries uh, to do well in the Olympics makes us all proud. I may probably throw that individual a party. Get my pot covers. I would do my own motorcade. We would have to close for the month. Nobody would work. I would probably do like the running dance. I would drive from Arima to Pinal to Moruga to Toko. Some kind of thing that would mark that event. I will never forget. Two for two all day! And now the news. Premier Dr. Diolando Smith stated that the BVI wants to be more than just consulted with matters relating to the UK leaving the EU. He said BVI wants to be directly involved in the negotiations concerning overseas territories. In a written statement titled The BVI Initial Considerations on Britain's Decision to Leave the European Union, Premier Smith stated that his government respects the democratic decision of the British people, but assured the public that there will be no immediate changes to the UK and BVI's existing arrangements with the EU. He said this is because the UK, under its EU treaty obligations, must negotiate its withdrawal, a process which will take at least two years after the UK government advises the EU formally of its intention to leave the bloc. Premier Smith also affirmed that government will be working with other overseas territories to make the case to the UK government that the overseas territories should be directly involved in Britain's negotiations with the EU. Premier Smith said he spoke with Minister James Dudridge, who has responsibility for the overseas territories, who assured him that UK's exit no negotiations would take into account the interest of the OTs. But Premier Smith said he reiterated to Minister James Dudridge that the BVI and other overseas territories must be engaged in the discussions. The Premier said, let me be clear, we want to be more than consulted. 
Minister responsible for natural resources, Dr. Kedrick Pickering, told the House of Assembly that a recent report showed that King Garden Bay has lost over 40 feet of sandy area since the 1950s. The report came at the end of Phase 1 of the North Shore Integrated Coastal and Watershed Stabilization Project, which aims to address the real issues of flooding, sediment pollution, and beach erosion in King Garden Bay and Brewers Bay. Dr. Pickering said the project has made significant progress since it started in March this year. He stressed the importance of the modeling work under Phase 1, which ends this month. He said the consultancy team has completed the Hydraulic and Coastal Dynamics Model Report, which, among other things, showed that King Garden Bay's sandy area has been reduced. It is critical that the pilot solutions implemented under this project and the wider solutions implemented separately are suitably designed to be effective and lasting. The report provides new, detailed, and highly valuable information about coastal and watershed dynamics in King Garden Bay and Bruce Bay that will, will not only inform pilot remedial projects under the North Shore Stabilization Project, but will inform wider scale solutions needed to address coastal and beach erosion, flooding and sedimentation. An interesting find, for instance, Madam Speaker, is that Cane Garden Bay has lost at least 15 meters of sandy area since 1953. The model also characterizes the type of sand present on these beaches and describes the wave dynamics in the bays in detail. All of this information, Madam Speaker, is necessary to design appropriate measures to recover the beaches and to protect the shoreline. The pilot scale projects to address flooding and sedimentation issues in King Garden Bay and Brewers Bay consist of installation of rain gardens, small constructed wetlands to treat stormwater, and enhancement of drainage infrastructure. Dr. Pickering said the final project selection is still underway and will be shared with the community shortly. Phase 2 involves the actual implementation of the pilot projects and will start sometime after contracts are signed in November this year. A budget of just under $500,000 is available to implement the selected private projects. As Minister, I am extremely dedicated to the success of this project, and I am confident that the remedial measures proposed will ensure flood resilience, protection of the beaches, and maintaining water quality in King Anabay and Bruce Bay for future generations. The North Shore Integrated Coastal and Watershed Stabilization Project is being implemented under the European Union-funded Global Climate Change Alliance Project on Climate Change Adaptation and Sustainable Land Management. The project is being done in the Eastern Caribbean and is managed regionally by the Organization of the Eastern Caribbean States and locally by the Ministry of Natural Resources and Labor. Now, this project will pilot the manner in which the, o the OECS member states will adapt to climate change and sustainably manage lands. This year's Territory Day, celebrated on July 1st, themed Our Story, the Independent Spirit of Our People, showcased VI history through dramatization and the launch of the Territorial Pledge. Nia Douglas has the details. This year, the Territory Day Celebrations Committee illustrated the independent spirit of Virgin Islanders through historical reenactments at the administration complex in Road Town, presented before an audience clad in Virgin Islands territorial wear. The stories of Nottingham Estate, the Kingstown Church, and Christopher Fleming were all dramatized at the ceremony. Be it remembered that whereas I, Samuel Nottingham of Long Island in the province of New York, gentlemen, an owner of the reputed owner of a number of Negroes on the island of Tortola in the English West Indies. And considering that liberty is their right and property, which in equity, justice, and good conscience ought to be restored to them, 
and having a testimony in my heart against the iniquitous practice of enslaving our fellow men. Therefore, as far as in me lies, I conclude it necessary for me to grant unto the said Negroes their natural right of freedom. We would like to report to this court, sirs, that in fact, we have been badly treated by planter Mr. Henry Clinton McLean. We are in fact worked in agriculture and we are receiving punishment, which we do not deserve, sirs. The task in the cotton fields, no, it's not cane fields, <laughs> was described as temporary well, you know, like temporary agricultural work. I was born in 1851 to my parents, John and Sarah Fleming, Nee Gordon, and lived the most of my life thus far in my home community of Langlook. I can defend myself and can do many things that are necessary for survival. But I am probably best known here in Long Island as a sailor, a mason, and as the registrar. The celebrations also included a performance by the BVI Heritage Dancers, who highlighted the African ancestry of the Virgin Islands through their dance, Stick Licking. In his remarks, Minister for Education and Culture Myron Walwyn spoke about patriotism and what it means to serve your country rather than simply take from it. Respect and pride in being a Virgin Islander means obeying our laws, and not just some of them, but all of them. It means finding ways to serve this country and not simply wait around to take from it. It means respecting our traditions and institutions, free of political interference and manipulation, so that citizens can feel a sense of security and fairness. All of what has been done over the past years is to help us celebrate our heritage and identity with greater pride. I want this warm feeling and sense of promise and opportunity that overcomes me every time I hear the territorial song song to be a continuous emotion inspiring all of us to do our best to make this territory the greatest place to live, work, and call home. We are formally institution, ins instituting elements that are synonymous with being a Virgin Islander because it is important for us to be reminded and instill in the next generation a great sense of pride and dignity. To this end, we have our inspiring territorial song, Oh Beautiful Virgin Islands, our territorial wear, our territorial signs and symbols, I'll be calling on us to have the courage to change Territory Day to Virgin Islands Day because this is indeed what we are celebrating. The minister closed off his remarks by leading attendees in the recitation of the new official Virgin Islands Territorial Pledge. I pledge to my country, to my country the, territory of the, Virgin Islands, the territory of the Virgin Islands to encourage national pride and dignity Render patriotic, service. Render patriotic service, promote justice for all, justice for all. Be, true be true to God, and remain dedicated, and remain dedicated to, these to these Virgin Islands. Reporting for JTV News, I'm Nia Douglas. The British Virgin Islands is being challenged to be bold and get rid of the reminders of colonialism or British rule. Minister for Health and Social Development Ronnie Skelton recently told his colleagues in the House of Assembly that the time has come for the territory to have a better understanding of where it is going. Minister Skelton, who was making his contribution to a debate regarding the approval of the territorial pledge, also touted the various initiatives being implemented to boost what he said is national pride. What we are doing here is developing national pride. 
we have started the process with the territorial song, the symbols, and all we need to do now is get the colonial part of it away from us. <laughs> if, we, if we are brave enough to do it, but I think it's, it needs to be done so we could understand as a people where we're going. Minister Skelton highlighted the importance of persons expressing national pride by respecting all territorial symbols. He further said that he is pleased that over time, there has been gradual improvement in the level of respect displayed when the territorial song and national anthem are being sung. It is true it's going to take some time, Madam Speaker, for us to, to get our people to understand that it, it, it needs some level of respect for these songs and symbols and pledges. You know, when, when we leave from here and go to some other person's country, we go to watch basketball or any of those major sports, I don't see most of us sitting down and disrespecting the other people's flag or the the song or the, the national anthem, you know, we pay respect to others, but we don't pay respect to ourselves. And it, it's going to take, so, it's going to take a while because we have, we have always been a people of an independent spirit. Yes. And we think we can do what we want, what men we want and how we want. But it's, 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 it's coming. I, I have seen some progress with the territorial song. And with the, um, you know, when they play the national anthem, everybody stop and everybody happy. And they play the territorial song, everybody walk about. But I, I, am, I am seeing progress, Madam Speaker. Minister Skeldon was speaking in the House of Assembly on June 23rd. And still to come on JTV News, Temptation Island organizer Birch Letsom talks about the threat that led to the postponement of their event. When we saw this trip, it was a bit, it's something like we couldn't think of before. It was like over the top. It was over the top. It was yeah. like, hey, listen, you know, talking about people coming in from neighboring islands. So it's no more, it's beyond us, it's beyond me. Mm -hmm. Paul on the Ball reports on the record-breaking OECS Track and Field Championships. It is Scott King. Hurricane Scott Williams King. Hurricane Scott Williams Alexander and the King. And many, many gifts for Gen Y Factor winner Donald Sanderson and the other finalists. Plus, Hot Trends has the inside guide to all the summer sizzle events. But first, we have news making headlines in the Caribbean. Welcome to JTV News Caribbean News Report. Jamaica's Police Commissioner Carl Williams says there is a strong possibility that authorities could declare a state of emergency amid a spike in crime in western Jamaica. The Jamaica Gleaner reported that following the shooting of some 20 people in St. James, the commissioner rejected calls for a state of emergency in St. James, stating that the measure will not solve the crime problem. Since then, government Senator Charles Sinclair has publicly called for the commissioner's resignation if he refuses to consider a state of emergency. Jamaica authorities discussed a state of emergency before last Friday when nine persons were shot in the new Ramble community. Police Commissioner Williams said he understands that persons would like to see a state of emergency but reiterated that it will only achieve results for a short period of time. He said more police will be deployed and more closed-circuit television cameras will be installed in the western parish of St. James. Meanwhile, Jamaica tourism officials say the situation must be addressed to avoid a fallout in the tourism industry. Caribbean distribution company Winfresh is seeking to secure its banana business as it diversifies into agro-processing. Winfresh is the premier supplier of Caribbean bananas to the UK. The company is looking to produce a variety of other products for distribution in the Caribbean and worldwide. The chairman of Winfresh made it clear that bananas would remain at the core of the group's business for the foreseeable future in spite of the increasingly competitive and difficult trading environment. The plan is to secure the banana business and to make it more competitive and sustainable. What is our 
capacity to supply Windward Island bananas, which is an important part of Winfresh's business. And there is a demand in the UK market specifically for Caribbean bananas. But looking at how we best serve that market with all of the, um, the competitive pressures that, um, that, that, that we are facing. The retreat also concentrated on the decision taken a few years ago to diversify into agro-processing. This is being advanced through established links with the agricultural sector and existing shipping and marketing channels into the United Kingdom. The long-term objective is to pursue market opportunities in Europe and North America. Whether it is supplying from bottled water to pepper sauce, jellies, jams, through to ice cream, a whole range of products that we see as the new thrust, if you like, of the Winfresh business. Agro-processing plants that have been established in Grenada and St. Vincent are producing a range of products for supermarket shelves in the islands. The plan is to roll out those products later in the international markets. The reason for that is because we wanted to utilize other products, other crops that are produced in the Windward Island, um, to which we could add value, because a lot of them um, we felt would struggle. Winfresh hopes before year-end to unveil a range of agro-products for the regional and later in the UK market. Really our flagship product is going to be a product that we develop that we call Fruit Scoop. And it is like ice cream but it is made entirely of fruit. It's 100% fruit and, but it, it's scoopable like a, it's not like a sorbet and we're hoping to produce that in Grenada. These products are expected on supermarket shelves before Christmas this year. In the meantime, the recommendations coming out of the retreat are being analyzed and the action plan for the future direction of the Winfresh Group will be discussed and approved by the board before the end of August. Joachim de Placy, HDS News Force. A Caribbean community, CARICOM report, has strongly condemned several member states it suggests are deliberately ignoring rules and court decisions to facilitate free movement, a guaranteed right for CARICOM nationals. According to the Gleaner, the report revealed that several CARICOM states which have denied nationals entry have failed to submit the information to the Joint Regional Communication Center, even in cases where the denials were widely reported in the media. The report, which was distributed to CARICOM leaders meeting in Guyana on July 4th, stated that all CARICOM countries must facilitate the travel of nationals by granting a stay of six months in the first instance, except in special circumstances. To fix the issues, CARICOM leaders are expected to mandate a range of actions, including a meeting of the chief immigration officers, CARICOM ambassadors, and other relevant officials to address the challenges being experienced by CARICOM nationals traveling throughout the region. A protocol is also to be completed to formalize a process on how to deal with free movement issues. And the last two remaining wild mountain chicken frogs living in Montserrat have been reunited and it is hoped that they begin breeding for the first time since 2009. Last month, a recovery project relocated the last female with the remaining male as part of a 20-year recovery plan for the species, which is one of the world's largest and rarest frogs that exists only on the islands of Montserrat and Dominica. The two frogs are the island's only known survivors of an outbreak of a deadly fungus disease, a pandemic ravaging amphibian populations worldwide. There are less than 100 left in the wild. The report said the frogs were living 7 meters apart among the boulders of a steep, fast-flowing stream in the rainforest at a site known as Fairy Walk. Zoologists and cameras will continue to monitor the frogs in coming weeks, as one of the fears is that the female will try to return to her former site. And coming up next on JTV News. Entrepreneurs invited to Insider's Guide to Fashion and Photography Workshop. Spotlight discusses Temptation Island's scare and new security measures. Highlights from the record-breaking OECS Track and Field Championship. And in our Hot Trends segment, your guide on how to have the best summer sizzle experience. 
see it on your smartphone or to see it on your tablet. I think that would be ideal, simply because my lifestyle is very on the go. I'm on the move, I might be at work, I may have some time that I can actually view it, but I'm not close to a television. You just can't be everywhere you need to be, all the time, especially if you work. So when we're out sailing on the water, somewhere that we'll be connected and watching the event live, so it'll be great. Welcome back to JTV News. Recognizing the importance of developing unconventional industries and highlighting entrepreneurial opportunities that remain present in the Virgin Islands, Barnes PR has partnered with Summer Sizzle BVI and Cosme to present the workshop titled The Insider's Guide to Fashion and Photography. Saskia Barnes of Barnes PR spoke exclusively to JTV News about the workshop, its inception, and what participants can expect. Barnes discussed the motivation behind the development of the workshop as an educational element to the Summer Sizzle BVI event. Well, as many persons would know, Barnes PR in 2013 launched uh, Global Entrepreneurship Week here in the Virgin Islands. And annually we have activities during the week of November to celebrate entrepreneurs throughout the territory. Um, based on the feedback from Global Entrepreneurship Week, we've always heard entrepreneurs and aspiring entrepreneurs really want us to do activities throughout uh, the year. So in 2016, we are looking to see how we can support that and how we can have activities outside of the annual celebration in November. And Terry Donovan for Summer Sizzle um, VI, we've always kind of been in contact and wanted to work um, with each other, providing an educational aspect uh, to the whole Summer Sizzle weekend and helping young persons in the territory um, really see what is needed, what is required to really have a real business in the industry. He really wanted to push the educational aspect um, of Summer Sizzle. And so we decided to work together and with the help of the COSME program, which is the EU funded program that's headquartered here in the Virgin Islands, we were able to have this workshop and the workshop will essentially be bringing um, into the territory over 15 young designers and photographers from around um, the Caribbean and overseas territories as well as provide space for emerging designers in the Virgin Islands and photographers. Barnes stated that participants can expect Summer Sizzle's esteemed host Nigel Barker as well as practical instruction in a classroom setting on how to really survive in the industry. It's an all-day workshop and it's going to have um, different topics. We're going to be talking about branding, uh, we're going to be talking about manufacturing um, and of course um, one thing that a lot of persons are looking forward to, especially the photographers in the Virgin Islands, is the uh, session with Nigel Barker, um, famous fashion photographer Nigel Barker. Um, so that's going to be a really exciting opportunity for our photographers in the Virgin Islands as well as those that are going to be coming in from around the Caribbean overseas territories. And we're going to have a few of the designers and experts that are coming for Summer Sizzle and they're actually going to be sharing their expertise, offering um, tips and just kind of really trying to work persons through the process of understanding the global fashion industry and how they can essentially develop their brand. The all-day workshop will take place at the Moorings Minor Inn on Friday, July 15th. Registration ends on July 13th and interested persons can register by contacting Barnes PR through their Facebook page or directly via email at hello at barnespr.com. The fifth annual Temptation Island was postponed after screenshots of a WhatsApp con conversation that circulated around the community raised security concerns. Ticket holders were distressed when the screenshots revealed an alleged murder ploy involving a shooting planned to be executed during the event at Peter Island's Ocean 7 Beach Club. Organizer Birch Letsom told Eduenka on JTV Spotlight that although security measures were already in place for the annual getaway party, organizers were not prepared for a threat to that degree. And so, I mean, what happened? You had, there was this, this post on Facebook yeah. that was threatening some, some person and at the, that was well, supposed to come to the event. Yeah, apparently someone that was supposed to be attending or in attendance 
uh, like you said, there, there was a threat on, on that person's life and obviously ultimately now to the safety of everybody else that would have been to the event. The security wasn't enough for you to have confidence that everything would have oh, been fine? Well, to be or honest with you... you just didn't want to take a chance? I just didn't want to take the, that particular risk. As you be honest with you, we had... Um, we have security measures in place, as always. Security and um, and uh, or or patrons' experience is like number one thing for us. So it was funny enough that we had security meetings, two or three security meetings that week. Um, we have risk assessment and mitigation that we do all the time. So it's like, okay, if someone is drunk, if there's an altercation, if someone is even harmed, we have Red Cross there. So we we already have um, police that work with us. But when we saw this threat, it was a bit. It's something that we couldn't think of before. It was like over the top. It was over the top. It was yeah. like, hey, listen, you know, talking about people coming in from neighboring islands. So it's no more, it's beyond us, it's beyond me. Mm -hmm. So we had to have um consultation with, with the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force, obviously had um conversations with the with the venue owners, had a conversation. Well, the first conversation I had was with my security team, like, hey, listen, this is what's going on, what do we do? And... um based on the, the the extra measures that we wanted to put in place it was just not enough time because by the time we, we got aware of it, it was like maybe 1 32 o'clock a new date has been set for the highly anticipated event and new security measures will be taken to ensure that everyone feels safe going forward in preparing for the annual event uh, pretty much what happens what, what we what what was in place before what we do is we have boats leaving from Rotown, we have boats leaving from Virgin God. Uh, everybody that, that uh, get on those boats, they're searched before they and they get on the boat. So mm -hmm. anything, right. you wouldn't even make it to the island that way. Uh, private boaters, they're always searched on the docks. When mm -hmm. they get off, they pay their fees or whatever it is, they're searched. And we are, we always have security manned and stationed at those docks at all times. What are the measures you plan to put in place? Uh, yeah, well, uh, after... After this particular incident, now we were able to have our conversations with higher ranks in the Royal Virgin's Police Force, also the Customs Department as well, and, and they are fully on board to make sure that everybody is, is they feel comfortable and we detour any yeah. in the criminal behavior. Mm -hmm. So what they plan to do for us right now is to add um, more security now on the sea. Okay. So they're going to have patrols by Marine, police, and other agencies you have they've contacted the USVI authorities as well so you feel more comfortable now that uh, you have uh, additional security in place a different uh, uh, additional measures definitely to, uh, 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 systems mm -hmm. to start a detect uh, for prevention and that sort of thing I feel a lot more comfortable to be very honest with you I just um I was glad initially that 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 threat became light before anything actually happened mm -hmm. and we were able to speak with the necessary authorities and like i said they were all on board they were like yo listen we're gonna do everything and beyond to make sure that everybody is safe in in this instance so i'm very confident based on the conversations that we had with the the royal Virgin's police force and the customs department as well uh based on what they told us i'm very confident that everything is going to be good and exclusively on Spotlight, let some reveal for the first time the long-awaited new date for this year's Temptation Island event, which has been rescheduled for August 20th. On the strength of its women's team, host BVI won the second OECS Track and Field Championships on Sunday, July 3rd, in a close battle with St. Kitts Nevis and Grenada at the Ayr Shirley Grounds. Paul on the ball, Hewlett has the details. 22 championship records and 19 all-comers records were established at the second OECS track and field championships in the BVI. In the best high jump field ever assembled here in the BVI, St. Lucia's Laverne Spencer cleared the bar at 1 meter 90 for an all-comers record, shattering the old record of 1 meter 65. Her teammate, Albert Reynolds, demolished the 20-year-old BVI All-Commerce record with a throw of 77.23 meters in the javelin. Also in the javelin, Crift the Games Women's Javelin Champion Cadiz Scott of Grenada had a massive throw of 50.35 meters, which was an All-Commerce record for the BVI. The BVI Chantel Malone leapt 6 meters 38 in the long jump to surpass Antiguan Barbuda's Janita Lewis, with a previous jump of 6.22 meters, which she held in 2014. Like my jumps felt good, but 
it was just a little flat. Um, I don't know if it had to be like I warmed up really early because we were supposed to go at four. I mean, five forty, and then we didn't end up going till after six. So I warmed up from since four o'clock. I don't know if that had anything to do with it, but my jumps itself felt good. I need to work on some technical things, but overall it was okay. Of course, this is a big year with Rio coming up. How has that worked out for you so far to date? Um, it's been a shaky road, I would say. I started off with 666. Um, I ended my season last last season with 669. And um, I've been struggling with like some little things. Um, so I'm just trying to work my way back to that shape. And local sprint queen, Taisha Harrigan-Scott, capped off a sprint double when she took down her teammate, Kareen King's old mark in the 200 meters of 23.76. Her new mark is 23.30. And King, Scott King, Williams on the inside. It is Scott King. Harrigan Scott, Williams, King. Harrigan Scott, Williams, Alexander, and King. Having Kareem in the race with you, did, did, did that help at all in any way? Actually, the competitors are always a push because you can't take anybody for granted. So you know that they're coming, so you have to always have to be on your best game. Plus, we have a fantastic crowd out here and we're at home, so we come out here to perform. Any word for the crowd at home here today? Love um, lovely, and I thank you for coming out and supporting us. It was a great pleasure. You have the atmosphere extremely hype. And in the men's 100 meter, Miguel Francis of Antigua and Barbuda cruise in to win comfortably after stopping during the race because of an alleged false start and then slowed down again just before the finish, throwing his hands in the air in despair with respect to the alleged false start. Francis showed why he is ranked number one in the world this year in the 200 meters after getting the baton from behind in the final leg of the 4x100 meters relay. He again demolished the field which included Olympian Anton Adams of St. Kitts and Nevis. St. Kitts Nevis, Barbados! Barbados in the lead here! Barbados! Antigua and Barbuda! Antigua and Barbuda! Antigua and Barbuda wins it! Antigua and Barbuda wins it! The Trinidad and Tobago women's 4x4 relay team entered the competition seeking to qualify for the Rio Olympics and got a fight on their hands from the BVI quartet of Tarika Moses, Ashley Kelly, Lakeisha Mimi Warner and Leticia Foy. BVI running back! Trinidad and Tobago at BVI! Trinidad and Tobago at BVI! BVI Trinidad and Tobago! BVI Trinidad and Tobago! BVI Trinidad and Tobago! BVI Trinidad and Tobago, BVI takes it, Trinidad and Tobago, now BVI drops the baton, BVI, Trinidad and Tobago. The BVI girls became the territory's second team to run under 3 minutes and 40 seconds with a time of 3.39.74 seconds for a new championship record. The BVI collected 183 points to claim the second OECS track and field championship title. St. Kitts and Nevis edged out Grenada by one point for second place with 176 to 175 respectively. Reporting for JTV News, I am Paul on the Ball Hewlett. Winner of the first Gen Y Factor competition, Darnell Sanderson and other finalists received their prizes at a cocktail party at the Moorings on July 5th. Brenda Ledstam Tai, acting director of the Department of Youth Affairs and Sports, hosted what was the official conclusion of the Gen Y Factor competition. Sanderson received a number of prizes in addition to the ones received on the evening of the competition, including $1,000 from Digicel, a number of gift certificates, and public relations training. In a brief acceptance remark, Sanderson thanked his fellow finalists for pushing him to do his best. I thank all of the finalists for pushing me to do better than I thought that I could in reaching to this point because without them I wouldn't have had a reason to push and try my best and all that good stuff. You know? They were really serious competition. Each one of them unique in their singing styles, unique in their, their performance and I appreciate all of you. The other finalists were also acknowledged and received prizes for their outstanding performances. Coaches, sponsors and other members of the organizing team were thanked one last time for their contribution to the Youth Talent Competition. 
and in our hot trends segment sophie b and nia douglas gave viewers their inside guide to summer sizzle bvi breaking down the various events parties and ticket prices of the fashion and lifestyle event of the year now it is just around the corner mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen summer sizzle 2016 is almost here i'm totally excited mm -hmm. and there's so many activities surrounding the event um uh, for instance the gold and white party mm -hmm. now normally it's just all white yeah and it's fantastic you know this is where people dress in their finest all white but this time around they're going to do a little bit of gold in there mm -hmm. and you basically dance the night away sip on some nice wine champagne eat some you know really good food mm -hmm. um you know mix and mingle with the models and just have a really really good time Paraji made an appearance last year she did she did and that was our long-awaited guest mm -hmm. So yeah, last time it was a lot of fun and of course like you really get to feel the vibe of Summer Sizzle when you go to the white party because yeah. of course the models and the designers are always there. The honky models. Yeah, and it's kind <laughs> of like <laughs> a big family kind yeah. of. Everybody's like all there together and they're all really excited. Especially some of the designers who are foreign and they, you know, they talk to you and you get to mingle with them. And yes. You get to really show them about the BVI and it's like, it's a really good experience and it's also, you can see that it's kind of tourism heavy as well because you're right. promoting the BVI. BVI at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it's like a worldwide event, which yes. is what it's marketed as, but you really feel it when you're there at the white party with everybody else there. And for this white party, uh, we're going to have the man DJ Dre. Mm -hmm. So you know that's going to be awesome. Dre definitely know how to do his thing. So he's going to be on the ones and twos. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be an awesome night. And for that night, $60 uh, will be for your tickets. So if mm -hmm. you're interested, we encourage you to get your tickets early because it's like totally crazy and it's that just, includes food as well yes so you nice get a food. nice dinner good music mm -hmm. and you get to mingle with some world-class designers and supermodels so the golden white fashion gala mm -hmm. is going to be on july 15th and we encourage everyone to get your tickets early 60 dollars. it's going to be awesome you don't want to miss it mm -hmm. then on july 16th mm -hmm. which is the saturday we're going to have the runway show yeah now nia give us a little information about the runway show well, this this year the ticket ranges, the uh, VIP ticket ranges from about seventy five dollars to one fifty, and that mm -hmm. depends on whether you want the front row, the second row, or preferred seating and access to the after party, okay. which should always be fun. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then mm -hmm. regular seating is thirty five dollars. Thirty five dollars in advance. In advance, so then it's more at the door. Forty dollars. Forty dollars mm. at the door. So you know, if you want to be up close and see all the models, you can pay one fifty for the full price. You get a gift bag. Well, yeah. Of goodies and you get to go to the after party and you just get to chill and relax for the whole day mm -hmm. a whole night or you can have the second row which is probably just as good but not as up There's close mm -hmm. but yeah that's a hundred dollars and then 75 dollars doesn't get you into the after party but you still get a gift bag and you're still up close in the vip section so that's july 16th summer sizzle the runway show mm -hmm. listen i mean summer sizzle is like the thing that everybody waits for you know mm. during the year I, mean, I had a great time last time going mm -hmm. to all the events and of course i was right next to taraji i mean ah. i was gonna poke her but her bodyguard is right there so i was like you were gonna do what? Was gonna poke her. Poke her? that's probably not a good idea <laughs> no probably but not i'm actually just as excited to see nigel barker this year yes. who will be hosting which is a renowned fashion photographer mm -hmm. and i mean i grew up watching america's next top model yes, and seeing yes. him there so i'm actually very very excited so maybe i'll get to poke him this year yeah <laughs> yeah, this spoken. Well, I just think that Summer Sizzle, even though it's not here yet, it's going to be fantastic. I feel it in my soul that it's going to be um, fantastic, full of energy, high fashion. It's going to be awesome. So we encourage you to get your tickets early, all right? Because, hey, sometimes it's like standing room only. And next in Mayo Clinic Medical Minute, head lice is common among children. But did you know that certain strains of lice are becoming resistant to some treatments? We're developing resistance to the normal things that we have available for people over the counter or even sometimes what we can prescribe. Dr. Geronimo Jones is next with that report. Stay tuned. <laughs> Eureka, located in the British Virgin Islands. Come discover Eureka Medical Clinic, which provides the most complete medical services in the Virgin Islands. 
our state-of-the-art clinic offers the highest quality in specialty care, cardiology, gastroenterology, orthopedics, and spinal surgery. We also offer specialty care in obstetrics and gynecology, as well as dermatology. Eureka Medical Clinic offers diagnostic procedures such as x-rays, mammograms, CAT scans, and all forms of ultrasound exams. Now, for the first time in the BVI, Eureka offers MRI scanning too. With colonoscopy and gastroscopy, we check the intestines and stomach for polyps, colon cancer, and ulcers too. Located at Geneva Place in the heart of Roadtown, Eureka Medical Clinic with Medicare Pharmacy and Labs offers you a comprehensive medical facility all under one roof. So for high quality medical services and convenience, there's no need to look any further. Eureka, you found it. For many people, hearing the word lice is enough to make them start itching. Unfortunately, infestations of head lice are common. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention estimate that 6 to 12 million infestations happen to children between the ages of 3 and 11 in the U.S. each year. And according to the Mayo experts, certain strains of the lice are becoming resistant to some treatments, making them hard to eradicate. When it comes to lice, the ick factor is huge, especially when you think about the hard to eradicate super lice. It can be a really challenging problem. Mayo Clinic family medicine doctor Summer Allen sees many kids with lice. She says super lice are strains that are resistant to some treatments. We're developing resistance to the normal things that we have available for people over the counter or even sometimes what we can prescribe. Dr. Allen says if your child brings home lice, make sure to check all family members just in case. Treat those with active infestations with over-the-counter products. Be sure to follow directions on the label. Wash clothes and bedding in hot water and dry them in a hot dryer. Or seal them in plastic bags for two weeks. If you're still finding lice or their eggs called nits after 72 hours, you could be dealing with resistance. They can always contact their providers and we can provide a stronger regimen for them to use. Dr. Allen says with persistence, you will get rid of lice. For the Mayo Clinic News Network, I'm Vivian Williams. Before we go, a brief look at the main headlines. A report coming out of the North Shore Integrated Coastal and Watershed Stabilization Project shows that Cane Garden Bay has lost over 40 feet of sandy area over decades. Territory Day features reenactments celebrating VI's independent spirit. Minister Ronnie Skelton asks if the BVI is brave enough to get rid of the reminders of colonialism. Entrepreneurs invited to Insider's Guide to fashion and photography workshop. Spotlight discusses Temptation Island scare and new security measures. Highlights from the record-breaking OECS track and field championship. And in our Hot Trends segment, your guide on how to have the best summer sizzle experience. In news from the Caribbean, crime surge in Jamaica could push officials to declare a state of emergency in western Jamaica and a recovery project for Montserrat's mountain chicken brings the last two rare frogs together in hopes that they begin breeding. Just a reminder that you can find all the news featured in this newscast as well as previous newscasts on our website jtvlive.net. Additional information and news updates can be found on JTV's Facebook page facebook.com slash jtv55. All the news features, press conferences, and JTV's television programs can be found on JTV News YouTube channel. You can subscribe for daily uploads. We welcome your questions and comments. You can email us at jtvnews at hotmail.com. For the entire news team, I'm Ino Soman. Thank you for watching.